The ozone layer is being broken down by industrially produced chlorine and bromine containing compounds and this has led to the formation of an ozone hole over the Antarctic and a smaller ozone hole over the Arctic. The natural cycles of ozone loss and production are balanced. However, this can be impacted by human emissions of CFCs and other ozone depleting substances. Ozone depleting substances contain chlorine and bromine and when they are broken down in the stratosphere they form free radicals that act as catalysts for the destruction of ozone into oxygen. In the stratosphere there is an overturning circulation which causes air to rise in the tropics, travel towards the poles and then descends in the poles. Due to this circulation, CFCs enter the stratosphere in the tropics where they are transported upwards and exposed to UV radiation which breaks them down and forms free radicals. You might therefore wonder why does the ozone hole form over the poles rather than over the tropics. This is because most of the free radicals initially react with other free radicals instead. These reactions form new compounds called reservoir species and they are relatively stable and so can temporarily store radicals in an inert form and prevent them from reacting with ozone for a short period of time. These reservoir species allow transport over long distances before being broken down to reform the radicals. They can therefore store chlorine and bromine for future use and so allow for a non-linear response to emissions of ozone depleting substances. The stratosphere is very dry and stable and there are very few clouds. However, in the Antarctic during the winter, it gets cold enough, about 185 degrees Kelvin, to form clouds in the stratosphere called polar stratospheric clouds. These clouds provide a surface on which the reservoir species can break back down into their radical forms. These compounds are confined to the polar vortex, which forms over the Antarctic during the wintertime and springtime, and it is a very strong westerly circulation that effectively traps this air in the polar region. The ozone hole does not occur during the winter because there is no sunlight. The compounds build up during the winter and then when the sunlight returns in the spring, it drives the photochemical reactions that very rapidly destroy ozone. Ozone levels become very low and the ozone hole is formed. This typically occurs in September and October. Then at the beginning of the Antarctic summer, in about November, the atmosphere warms and the polar vortex breaks down and the ozone hole is filled in. An ozone hole does also occur during the springtime over the Arctic in about March. However, these ozone holes are more infrequent and less severe than in the Antarctic. This is because there is greater variability in the residual circulation in the northern hemisphere. This makes the Arctic polar vortex more distorted and warmer than the Antarctic polar vortex, which leads to fewer polar stratospheric clouds and therefore less ozone depletion. The Antarctic generally has large ozone depletion of about 50% of the ozone column, whereas in the Arctic the ozone depletion is less pronounced and more variable, typically 0 to 30% of the ozone column. It has also been found that there is long-term decreasing trend in ozone in the mid-latitudes of about 6% per decade. In the tropics, no trend in ozone has been observed so far, but the ozone layer is naturally thin in the tropics.